Good evening. Welcome to uh, the premiere of the video of Arredoblar, done by Magos Herrera, Monica Salmaso, Brooklyn writer, and Matias Kunzli. I'm Sebastian Zubieta, the director of uh, Music of America Society and also the arranger for this piece. We are very excited to be virtually with you tonight. We are pre-recorded. We have pre-recorded this conversation so uh, that we can respond to any comments that you may have on YouTube or any other platforms where you may be watching this. So we will speak for a few minutes about this piece, what it is, how it came about, and I would like our uh, panelists or our four participants of the conversation to introduce themselves and then we will speak. So, Colin. Yes, hello, so good to be with everyone. Uh, I'm Colin Jacobson, a violinist with Brooklyn Rider, coming to you from Brooklyn right now. I am Mago Herrera, I'm a singer, uh, and I'm in Mexico during this this isolation in San Miguel de Allende, beautiful town in, close to Mexico City. And, um, and I'm so happy to be here sharing this music with you all. And Monica? I am Monica Salmazo. I'm from Brazil. I'm talking to you from uh, the countryside of Sao Paulo, where I am for three months. And I, I think I will be forever. It's the <laughs> We have, and it's wonderful to meet you guys here, to see you, to sing with you, to share this this beautiful uh, uh, song with you and, and hope. Magos had the idea of doing a couple more videos with doing something else with uh, with with Broken Rider, because I think the, the experience. Well, I saw the final product; it was so beautiful, and it, you know, it's great. You're, you're still doing it, and whenever you can get back together. So I think there was a continuation of that. And at the very same time, just randomly, I watched a documentary on two very famous uh, Uruguayan composers of classical music that are not very well known anywhere. And the lady who's talking in the documentary, she mentions the song Arredoblar, which I, for some reason, had never heard of. And so it was a total coincidence. And then I heard that song and I thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened. And then I said, Magus, we, so she said, it came at the same time and she said, we have to do this. So whatever, whatever do we have to do this? It felt perfect for the time because we have hope that we will be together and we will be on the streets and making music and all that together, all of us you know, at some point in our lives. So it came at a perfect, um, with a perfect message of hope. So Monica, you have been doing this uh, online videos for a long time. I've seen in your Instagram, they're really beautiful. I see all the split image that you have a guitarist playing facing this way and you look at them. I mean, not really look at them. I was watching the one with Yamandu the other day. So you have been doing this for, since it started. So how did that, how did you come to do this? I am a kind of dinosaur in, <laughs> in social media, really. I don't know anything. I just became a user of Instagram uh, I don't know, some months ago, but I, I thought it was good because it was short, just short messages in, okay, wonderful, not that normal uh, uh, writing things that Facebook, just small thing. I like it and I started posting some, some short things. Uh, it's, uh, life, it's impossible to play together because of the delay. We, I tried, it was a mess. <laughs> It was awful. It was yeah. impossible. And then I said, okay, let's try to, to record something and then we can edit. But uh, we are friends. I invited friends. And then I said, let's just look at, at each other. Let's, let's do something uh, to feel. We feel we are together when we record. Even the first. I recorded with Marcos. It was wonderful. And I recorded <laughs> the first video. And, and I was with 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 she she was not there but i was looking at her because i was thinking about her and then i i sang and, and looked at her because i said i said she will be here she will be just near me and then it was good and then when she recorded she could look at, at my video and then she could she could look at me look at my video and then we uh, editing we are together again so it's it's being together but uh, separately, it's a way to, to, to keep staying alive and doing what we love to do. I, I would die if I stayed here three months without meeting people that I love, without singing, without making music. It would be 
I would be sick, really. Oh. Marcos and Co, you haven't done this remote video recording, right? Uh, when this was the, f the first one for you guys? Uh, really? No. Uh, she, I mean, not, pr not prior to lockdown, yeah. No, of course, yes, yes, yeah. you hadn't, yeah. yeah. Because one thing that, that I thought the audience would like to know, so the way this was done is that the director, Adrian, who is in France, so this is well, more international, he met virtually with each each one of you to walk through their houses and, and their places and find the, the best place to shoot, right? So Colin is against the window. I mean, you will see him in a moment. And uh, different people, they're in different places. So it was it was a very, I think it, then it turns very unique because since each situation is different, there's no uniformity and there's no intention of uniformity. It's really, really different. But it has a directorial eye to right, guide exactly. us through. So that was nice about yes, it. Yes, yeah. that's a good thing about yeah. people who know what they're doing. And they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is his work. But you know, I think the beauty of, of this video, <laughs> one of the beauties of, of this video is that uh, Adrian, actually, uh, the videographer, he actually um, edit and direct some of the videos that uh, we have from Dreamers Project. Right. Um, so he understands, first of all, the, the aesthetics that, that we've been using. Um, I love his, his, his photographic eye, his aesthetic. And it's funny that we, we did a previous uh, video with Chano Dominguez in Barcelona and, and I was here in, in Mexico and he actually put some references from Mexican cinema. And oh. uh, so I was like, you know, just, let's just keep in, the, in this direction. And I'm really, I'm really amazed of, of both uh, Adrian, Adrian and uh, Bill with the editing and also Oscar Zambrano, the master, uh, the, the uh, masterization engineer, because with the resources, the very limited resources, because we're all recording to these devices or right. to the iPhone and what they did, I think, is, is really amazing. It's, it's really beautiful and very clear, and the, the audio is fantastic, and it's just beautiful. So why don't you share a little bit for, for everyone, Sebas, what, what, what does, I mean, this, this song was written after the dictatorship in Uruguay, right? right? Well, so why don't you share with all of us what's the spirit of the song? Right, right. So the song was, you know, it was released in 79, which was right in the middle of the dictatorship. Um, it was, you know, in Uruguay, I think it lasted until the early 80s. In Argentina, it wasn't until 83. So we were right in the middle of it. And it was the song of, um, you know, this message of reclaiming the streets and that we will, will be happy again because it was not fun. You know, Monica le lived it in Brazil. Ours were even, you know, were really, really violent, both in Uruguay and Argentina. The, they were really, really dark times. I think I mentioned when we started doing this that my image, I was very young, so in, the dictatorship was from 76 to 83. I have the, rem the memory now that the sun never came out in those seven years. It was always overcast. I have <laughs> no memory of a sunny day during those times. So that song, I think, was a, such a powerful message when, when it came out that I, somehow I, I missed it. I was 12 when the song came out. Uh, I didn't hear it until now, so I'm a little embarrassed by that. <laughs> but, but it was this, yeah, the message that we will do it. We will be out in the, at night, which was a thing you couldn't do because there was a curfew. Of course, for years you couldn't go out, you couldn't gather, you couldn't be outside. So that hope that it will come, and as the song says at the end, that the the heart cannot take any more any more sadness. So we we can't we can't take any more of this, unfortunately. After a little while, we didn't, but it was it was tough at the time. <laughs> it was, so it in was that sense, up. in that sense, I mean, that's why I, we both thought it was so timely because right. not only because of the sanitary circumstance that we we are living around the world, but also um, from other circumstances that are happening politically around the world, and also um, it made so much sense after Dreamers album were actually. All these songs were about right. dictatorship, the uh, artists that suffer through dictatorships. And um, so it was like the perfect narrative to continue. Colin, what do you think about this? I mean, after, after all these recordings that we did previously? <laughs> well, I, I, I've had this thought a lot recently just about um, how music, with lyrics or without, 
right. um, just like is constantly changing its meaning in relation to what is going on right. in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So the pieces that, um, you know, we've had this relationship with the album of Dreamers and all those incredible songs that I've gotten to know through you um, in a deeper way. And, you know, they, they obviously had a long history before we even did them. Right. And uh, right. but even within the time we've been doing them, the, the circumstance of the world has changed so much. And and so our personal relationship to them has changed so much. And um, I mean, even this call is so amazing to be with the three of you in our various places, various <laughs> countries um, of Brooklyn and Manhattan, of course. And yes, we're two different countries. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so. I don't know. It just it it it, ha it touches different emotional parts, um, and and it's this weird thing of at this moment where so much of the world is experiencing a similar thing on one right. hand, and then is also the most divided perhaps it has ever been in terms of how we all are experiencing this moment, whether that's due to governments, whether that's due to um, social movements around the world, mm -hmm. or. Um, I don't know, so much, it's such a time of flux and, and I, right. I, it, obviously we haven't experienced it before. I, I was surprised to be part of the invited for the, the project because Brazil, because of the language, uh, normally be a part of, of the, the South America. Right. Of, yeah, because we, we do it, we do it. I don't like it, but it happens. There is something because probably because of the language or Brazil is so big, so huge that it doesn't, it's okay to be just inside right. Brazil because Brazil is it's enormous. But there is this, this sensation that in the South America, every other countries are together and Brazil is, mm -hmm. I don't know why I don't like it, but it happens. And it's beautiful to be invited to, to the party, <laughs> to be invited to, to, to share a message like the like this one to everybody it's something that we are living now it's it's the maybe the most important experience that we all have about uh, one unique world for everybody right. we, we are one unique uh, world we, we are not this separate there is no my place, your place, your life, my life. I do it for me. I don't do it for you. This is the experience that my life touches yours and, and, and it happens to everybody. And we, we have the same risk, but we have also the right. same hope. We have also the same uh, uh, possibility of helping each other, of touching each other. And this is, this is so beautiful for me to be, to be in. And Marcos, how do you, so I can ask you, so what, what did you, um, so how did you think of, because, you know, you, you did this whole album and then, so you keep doing it, why and, and how did, uh, why do you think of this? Because it was, you already, you told me I want to do, I want to do a video. Well, you know, I think um, when this all started, and I, I guess many, many of us experienced the same, I don't know, you, 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 you will tell me, but I think it took me like, two months to understand what was going on and being overwhelmed of, about this whole situation and trying to understand what was going on and all these cancellations with Brooklyn Writer and with other projects. And, and there is this emotional, you know, you always look forward to make music again. That's, that's what one of our purposes in life. And, right. and, and this experience with Brooklyn Writer, and I, I don't get tired of, of saying it, it's been one of the most beautiful musical experiences of, 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 of my um, performance life. And, and when all these cancellations started to happen, um, I, I choose to be in silence for, for a couple of months um, to understand. I haven't understand it obviously fully, <laughs> I, I really wanted to, to, to deliver something that it's powerful to keep the conversation with Brooklyn Ryder and also to have uh, Monica. It's, I think it's very crucial because as she said, there is this bridge between right. Brazil and Brazilian music has been part of my influence forever. And, and Monica is, is an artist that I, that I love, that I admire, that I, it's a reference to me. And when she jumped in, um, it was 
kind of like like a, all this video to me is like a reaffirmation of 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 what we believe in music as a as a transfer transformative um sale um and just joy you know i just right. i just feel joyful about this well, I, I love uh, all of the imagery of of not retreating in the in the song, right. you know, moving forward. And I mean, even in that simple step, uh, Magos, of bringing in Monica and Sebastian to this thing that we've already done together, it's a forward motion right. step. Right. Which I and and I think, you know, in everyone's daily life, you you know. And it's totally fine to go silent for a while. Like everyone has been dealing with this time in different ways, but. Um, the small ways or the big ways to keep moving forward in one's own life and in the world at large feel like good things to do. <laughs> no, you know, I, I just wanted to point out that when, when we decided to do it, Sebas, I, I, one of my concerns was like, oh my God, how, um, because it's not the same thing to, to record something that, you know, it's very established and, and, you know, like a di different kind of, of, of aesthetics um, with strings is very subtle. And, mm -hmm. and uh, my experience why, when we were doing uh, our album Dreamers to, to understand how Brooklyn Rider as a cell breathe took me, right. took me a while. And, and, and it was only after, you know, a lot of playing together that I started to get into their breathing and and to me this was you know one concern like okay how are we gonna work this out in the distance so i wonder uh colin for you guys how, how what's is it a challenge to record in the distance because i know that you guys are are doing different projects in the distance at how how, how it's well, been? yeah i mean i would just say that actually with brooklyn rider we we actually have as a group sort of taken mostly the silent path uh -huh. over the last three months because of what you just said we we do like when we're rehearsing together someone is always like can we get closer together how can <laughs> we get closer together you know and uh, i mean you've probably seen that and even with uh, on stage when we're doing a show with monitors like we really care about that physical proximity because this is such a physical thing the bow you know physicalizes your breath right, like right, as right. a singer yeah. so it's very hard, challenging and we're not used to building tracks like um right. like in the studio pop wise where you have like build the drums then the guitar then the vocals or whatever the order right, is right, of course. you know it happens in the same room at the same time so i think you know as you, like we we didn't know how long it was going to go on um so we just haven't put a lot of effort to making a lot during this time. We did one Philip Glass track. Mm. We did uh, a little bit of a Beethoven quartet because we had an album coming out um, focused on healing and music and this Beethoven quartet, but we really didn't do a lot. Before we enjoy the video, we wanted to thank, I want to thank all the musicians, Magos, Monica, Brooklyn writer, Matias for putting their art, doing this over the distance, which was, I know, as we discussed, it wasn't the thing that we have done most often. It was a learning experience. I really appreciate the effort and the, the, you know, the, the effort that you put into making this work. And we're really, I'm extremely happy to be able to do this. I wanted to also thank the composers of the song, Mauricio and Ruben, for uh, letting us do it. I hope you enjoy it. And I wanted to thank the funder that make this, made this possible, the MedLife Foundation has supported our music series, the Music of the Americas music series, for many years. We are extremely thankful and we're very happy to be able to keep doing this and to be able to do it online in these times where we cannot be together. And uh, so I thank them very much for that. Well, I would like to thank uh, Bill, Oscar and Adrian, all the people behind the scenes that made this possible and that make this video sound and look so beautiful. And I also like to thank uh, Maestro Dobel, uh, Tequila, that I have been so supportive and beautiful uh, throughout these times, and um, and that have been backing backing me up to keep creating during this pandemic. All right now, thank you and enjoy the video. Yeah, I'm 
Se espera 